Hi everyone, welcome to this session of the Tiger Academy, US Stock Financial Statements for Beginners. In the previous lesson, we have covered 8 types of companies based on their cash flow statements. Which type does technology giant Apple belong to? In this lesson, we'll analyze the cash flow statement of Apple Inc. In the cash flow statement, you should pay special attention to the CAPEX and share repurchase data. Now, let's begin. First, let's take a look at CAPEX. CAPEX generally refers to the purchase of long-term assets such as, among other things, property, plans, equipment, and patents. Following the steps of financial analysis, open the Tiger Trade app and search AAPL. Click on Company and then View Details. Select Cash Flow and then find Capital Expenditure. For the conveniency of calculation, you may want to write down CAPEX and net profit for the past five years and summarize them in a table. For example, Using Apple's cash flow statements for the past five years, we found that its CAPEX net profit ratio was consistently below the 50% threshold. From 2018, that ratio was below 25% and continued to decline further year by year. This means that Apple's CAPEX as a percentage of net profit has been declining. And, as a result, it is eating less and less into that net profit, allowing net cash flow to increase. In other words, Apple's control over its costs has gotten better and better. Next, let's take a look at stock buybacks. A stock buyback, simply put, is when a listed company uses its own funds to repurchase its shares in the market, using the same approach as above. Under cash flow from financing in Apple's cash flow statement, we can gather share repurchase data for the past five years. You'll find that Apple has been spending a considerable sum each year repurchasing its own shares. And looking at the sector data in the Tiger Trade app, you can also see that this expenditure is higher than the average in its industry sector. This means that Apple has ample funds to undertake stock buybacks in order to keep improving shareholder value. The data speaks for itself, and I don't need to say anything more about what a great company Apple is. So, which of the eight profiles do you think Apple fits into? Summarizing the financial data for the past five years, I've created cash flow identifiers for Apple in the following table. Based on the criteria of the eight profiles, I've assigned the profile type to Apple for each year. By comparing the profiles in different years, we found that Apple fits the star profile in 2017, 2020, and 2021, while it fits the cash cow profile in 2018 and 2019. Given this data, we can draw the following conclusions. 1. In the three of the last five years, Apple has fit the star profile, which paints a very healthy picture. It indicates that Apple has been able to expand its business while maintaining healthy operations and has strong growth potential. Cash flow from financing activities in the past five years has been marked by outflows, and most of the outflow was used for stock buybacks, accounting for more than 80% of the cash outflow from financing activities. This tells us that Apple has plenty of capital and a strong will to provide good returns to its shareholders. It is, indeed, a very good company. 2. In 2018 and 2019, Apple fits cash cow profile. This means that the company was less motivated to expand during those two years, but that this did not impact overall operations. Well, that's it for today's case study. Have you understood everything that we covered? By looking at CAPEX and share repurchases in a financial statement, we can clearly determine whether an investment target is a good company or not. In fact, today we constructed an accurate cash flow profile to analyze Apple's financial statement. At this point, you've learned everything you need to know about the three financial statements. Next, we'll apply that knowledge so that you can increase profits and avoid losses. See you next time!